hi, it's Connie from Faf Designs. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint and I am going to break some rules today with still calling more mineral paint. I'm going to create a chippy farmhouse kind of look on these drawers behind, um, which are actually for myself. So keep watching if you want to find out how I did it. Okay, so I've already prepped the drawers for this video. They were waxed and all of that had to be stripped off. If you want to know the best practice to do that, I have some videos on my own YouTube channel that you can go and watch. And as I mentioned before, we're going to be working in silk or in one mineral paint today. The colour that I'm using is conch, which is a really dusky pink. It's always a good idea to stir your silk paint first rather than shake it purely because the heavy ingredients sink to the bottom and when you stir it you are making sure that you're getting all those ingredients and mixing them up so that it's nice and even as opposed to shaking sometimes doesn't get all the way to the bottom of the can. As I mentioned at the start of the video, we're going to break some rules with silk. So typically silk lends itself very well to a one colour finish. Spilt some sea spray on me there. So as you've noticed, I have decanted some of the conch into a container. And now I'm making a mixture with sea spray. So all of the decorative accessories from the chalk mineral paint range work with silk so you can glaze silk you can wax it you can add an additional top coat if you want to change the sheen level it works with sea spray you can do all of the things that you do with chalk mineral paint with silk so you can see the consistency that i've made it's quite a thick consistency and i'm just making sure that all of the sea spray is mixed into the paint and it's a nice even mixture Usually when I'm using silk, I do like to use a, either a synthetic brush um, or a roller to achieve a really sleek finish. But for this particular effect, I'm using the bell brush, which is a natural bristle brush. And that's because we want to build up loads of texture on that first coat of paint. I'm applying the mixture of conch, and sea spray straight onto the top of raw wood so like i mentioned before these were waxed pine i stripped the wax off i cleaned them with white lightning and then i lightly sanded them but i have left a lot of the original marks and dents there's a big old chunk missing out of that drawer in the center i'm going to leave all of that and i'm going to work with the characteristics of the piece because we are going very sort of farmhouse and chippy so you can see that i'm stippling the paint on in areas building up the texture i don't want texture all over i just want certain areas to be very textured because they're the areas that we're going to chip away at to give that chippy farmhouse look Next I'm going to use the thingamajig tool and that is the official name for it, I haven't made that up. And it is basically something that I use to create different types of texture. So I've now, I've stippled the paint on originally and before it is dry, I am now going to go over the top and just flatten some of those peaks off so that it almost looks like layered, thickly layered paint that has been sort of weathered away over the years. You'll notice that I'm only doing it in certain areas and I'm alternating the way that I'm using the thingamajig tool to get a variety of different uh, textures on the piece. 
and I think the most authentic way of making a piece look chippy and aged is by varying the technique that you use to apply the paint. So in some areas I'm patting, in some areas I'm smoothing down the peaks that I stippled on and I just think this creates a more authentic vibe. Okay, here's where we're going to break some rules. So, the reason I'm drying this with a hairdryer is because silk dries from the top down, so it forms a skin. I need to recoat this because I want full coverage of the conch and I need the surface to be pretty much to a position where I can recoat it. Now, usually, if you are recoating silk and you want a completely beautifully smooth finish, I would recommend two to four hours in between and I would also recommend not to use a hairdryer but we are using texture and there is a reason that I want to recoat this without the underneath being completely dry which I will explain shortly. Okay, so I'm now using a synthetic brush to apply the second coat. So I haven't left this for any longer to dry than what you've just previously seen me do. So I blasted this with the hairdryer and I went straight on to apply a second coat. Now, usually, like I say, I would advise to leave two to four hours before you recoat silk to allow it to thoroughly dry out but I don't want it to thoroughly dry out because I find the best way to get a chippy effect is for the paint to be sort of between 80 to 90% dry. So I am using a super light hand to apply a second coat of silk over the top of the texture. We're not using sea spray in this. This is just straight up conch, straight over the top. I'm going all the way over the top of the texture. And this is just going to give me full coverage of the silk, which I want for this particular piece. So once I've done a second coat of paint all over the drawers, I'm going to take out the hairdryer again and I'm just going to blast it off again so it's about 90% dry. It'll feel touch dry but those layers underneath will still be soft, especially where we've raised up the texture with the sea spray. Um, and you can see I can keep touching the drawers to see whether they are completely touch dry. They will probably still feel cold to touch and you kind of with experience you kind of get a feeling for how dry this needs to be but i would definitely say it's sort of like 90 percent dry and you just want those areas of texture to be ever so slightly soft so that when we distress it it kind of peels back the paint So you can see I've got a couple of different tools that I'm going to use to chip away at that paint. I've got a normal uh, paint scraper and then I also have a palette knife. Um, again, variety is the key, I think, with chippiness. You don't want it all to look the same. You don't want it to all chip away the same because that looks kind of contrived and not natural. What you want is variety in your chippiness. So 
So I'm starting out by just running the paint scraper over the surface which is going to hit those peaks of texture that we created earlier on and it's just going to pull them back so I also like to do around the draw edges because that's where naturally gets worn and torn the most and around corners and things like that as, as handles as well get chipped away so I'm just all I'm doing is literally chipping back on that paint until I get to a position where I'm happy with the level of chippiness and I think it looks authentic. So I just thought I'd bring you in for a bit of a closer look. This is all I'm doing. I'm just scraping away at the paint. And because it is softer, because it isn't completely dry, it's a lot easier to chip away. If you left this to dry overnight or for a couple of hours, the sea spray goes rock hard and it makes it a lot difficult, more difficult to chip away at the paint. I do find that if you leave it till it's you know it's got that little slight bit of softness to it still it does make it a lot easier to chip away at Another way to distress is obviously to get your sander out. You can either do it with an electric sander like I am, or you can do it by hand. I use an electric sander so that the dust doesn't fly everywhere. And I'm just chipping away at the handles because they were originally a gloss paint, a gloss white paint underneath. I remember painting these when I was probably in my teens and I'm just chipping away so that the white is more prominent and I'm also sanding it back so that you can see the original pine knobs underneath. think we're at a sufficient level of distressed chippiness and one that I'm satisfied with so I'm going to use some best and wax over the top of the paint now you've seen me probably wax before and you know I love wax when you are using wax over chalk mineral paint I usually apply a clear coat of wax first which gives you more control over your coloured wax. As silk has a built-in top coat already, there is no need to apply a clear coat of wax first. So I am just using Best Dang Wax in brown with a French tip brush straight over the top and this paint has been allowed to now dry overnight so this is thoroughly dry I'm not going to interfere with anything that I've done before and I'm just feathering it into the edges slightly around the keyhole where you'd expect sort of dirt and grime to build up and don't worry if you go in too heavy with this because we already have the built-in top coat on silk it means we can control it quite easily
Okay, so it is currently looking like a hot mess. And you can also see my dog just make a sneak appearance in the side in the side of the shop there. Um, so now I'm just grabbing some shop cloth and I'm going to remove the excess of brown wax. So this is going to rub it into all of those areas that I chipped back and make it look like it's old and a bit sort of battered and well hopefully that's the look I'm going for anyway. If you do go in too heavy with the brown wax and you want to erase it all together the beauty of Bestang wax is that it's water based so this product doesn't smell it is easy to clean up your brushes or rags you can just pop them in the washer or wash your brushes with a normal brush washing product or soap and water and they will clean up beautifully so all you need to do is if you have gone a little bit too heavy with your brown wax which I have in areas grab a rag or a cloth some water and you can literally erase it you can do this with a baby wipe as well and it will take it back to the paintwork underneath without having to remove it with any white spirits or solvent based products final step of these drawers just to give it a little bit more dimension I'm going to add some white wax so I'm using the best Ang brush which is a natural bristle brush it's also got a really large surface area which is perfect for the finish that I'm looking for I've added some white wax onto the brush and I've just taken off uh, the excess swilled it off onto a rag and I'm just going all the way over the drawers and this is kind of going to give like a sun bleached effect and it just adds to the depth of the colour. Okay, for all those people that love a polished finish, look away now. Here's a close-up of the chippiness and all that kind of rustic vibe. And here is the staged piece. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the transformation and make sure you subscribe to my channel.